Welcome back to the Fish Tank right here on the Miami Dolphins Podcast Network. Seth Levitt, DJ Preach is in the back, and of course, the man with the best hands in the podcast business, OJ McDuffie. Yeah, you know it, Big Seth. What's, what's <laughs> how up, you man? feeling, man? I'm good, man. You know, you know, you know how I get, man, when it's my side of the football, bro. Yeah, well, this is uh, you know, two phases. Yes. We're covering two phases of, of the ball, but I know if we can get in that offensive huddle. All of a sudden, you just have a little more pep in your step. I do, man. You know, I, I like defensive players. I just don't love them. Right. You know, but right. I, I love me some offensive guys, man, especially guys that played in our era, both okay. of our eras. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's right. That's right. A teammate played in your era on your side of the ball. I think we're about to have a good show. Absolutely. Let's get it. Cool. Let's get it. Introduce him then, man. Well, I thought you were going to open it up, but I'll introduce it. Ed Perry, he's like, okay, you you were ready to take over the show. I was. <laughs> I was definitely. So, so maybe a little critique. Did we not do you right here? Ed Perry, welcome to the fish tank. Thank you for having me. I'm glad to be here. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, all y'all shows and whatnot, did, now y'all pick a time for me to come on here. Yeah. Well, we have I've been waiting like in. forever in oh, the day. Only well, that's, been on four years. that's on the wide yeah. receiver. You know uh, what I mean? That's okay. on the wide receiver. Let's get started, man. You know, Ed, you arrived in Miami, you know, as a sixth round pick in 1997, you know, drafted out of James Madison. I don't know how many football players come out of there, but I mean, you did. You know, wait, wait a minute, what was hey. that? I got a little that side in jokes there. in here, okay? <laughs> All right. Nah, I'm just playing, man. That's, that's not even on the script. You got a big game that's, this that, weekend. That's not now. even on the script. I'm just, I'm just riffing right now, you know what I mean? And, uh, but you were tied in, but actually, you know, you got a lot of run at tight end your first couple of years, but then you kind of settled in more as a long snapper. Um, how much long snapping did you do there at, at JMU? And, uh, you know, I, did you realize that that would be for the most of your I career? actually did no long snapping what? in college. None until I actually I met Ron Mattis, and he, he used to play in the NFL, and he actually helped me. Um, I went on YouTube, started learning how to snap on my own. Stop throwing the ball against the wall. I got a couple of dents. My mom didn't like that. Right. But um, <laughs> when... Um, I got drafted here. I got drafted as a tight end, but they didn't know I could snap. When Wayne, Frank Wainwright went out, they was like, okay, we need you to snap. And so I was just telling them, I said, man, Jimmy Johnson, Eddie Jones, the general manager, and Wayne Heising is out there watching me. I'm like, why are these guys watching me? I Over the snap. long snap. <laughs> yeah. It was like, uh, it's, it's called politics and money. So right. <laughs> right, they're, right. they're watching their money. So I never, I never snapped until I got to, to the pros. For those guys that do it now, it, it's become like a specialty. Yeah. But you never did until you got to the pros? Never. Wow. But, but see, those guys can't block now. I can block. Mm. I'm 6'5", 275, and can snap. Or, or no, hold on, right, 275 right, right. Now? now? You didn't play at 275. Um, at 260. Okay, 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 <laughs> okay. But I can still snap it right now as we speak. <laughs> yeah. So you want me to snap it to you? Yeah, well, but when we're done work here, out, we'll get a little yeah, too, too yeah. small right yeah. here. Okay, yeah. How, much, yeah, how much? How much? Well, I mean, we're just looking at extra need? points, field goals right uh, now. Though. I'm talking about 15 yards, Ooh. juice. Bullets. I still got velocity. Bullets. <laughs> Bullets, boom, on point. He's been fine. I've never seen anyone this fired up over long snapping. So, uh, you know, juice talked about getting here and, and finding your way as a long snapper. But another thing that you found, and it didn't take long, was for you to find a nickname. Tell oh, us Lord. about Big Gam. Oh boy! Oh man! That that was a great story. I was just, <laughs> we playing in Indianapolis coach that week. Okay. And we had a walkthrough. A walkthrough. Yeah. So of course we had the scout team cars, and we have to, you know, blitz, do whatever we have to do to help the offense out. So we do the blitz. So Paul Bujo comes up there and knocks me out the way. And Paul Boudreau uh, was the offensive line coach. He was the, the offensive time. line coach. And, and, and I said, man, don't you ever put your hands on me <laughs> like that again. And the whole offense went silent. <laughs> I, uh, it's got to do with Juice and Richmond Webb. And Richmond Webb was like, easy, easy, Big Gam. <laughs> I said, Gam. <laughs> big Gam. And I said, man, what the crap is, is Big Gam? He said, grown man. Right. You're a grown man. Wait a and ju There's and something juice, between and you. juice was over there like, man. <laughs> and juice was, juice was like, man, that's just Ed Perry, man. Come on, man. Go on with the next play. <laughs> you know, I'm getting mad at Juice. I get mad at everybody. Yeah. And everything. So that's why. Why are you I got. so damn mad? Cause he put his hands on me. Okay. Don't put your hands on me. <laughs> hey, I'm a grown man. Six five grown ass man. man. I'm a grown ass man. There you, you, go. you know what I mean? So that means don't put your hands on me. And Richmond right. was always good to come up with a nickname. <laughs> yes. But Big Gam has stuck. Like he. Oh, it stuck with me for the last 
Probably 17 years. Yeah. Right. They yeah. St- you st- do some people that were your teammates still, they hey, know, what's up, Big Gam? They know, what's up, Big Gam? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I know, Richmond. Richmond. Yeah. Uh, Richmond's <laughs> Richmond known for that. Yeah, He's very known much for so. nicknaming people. Do you get a lot of Big Gam this day? Yeah. To this day? Yeah. I, mean, right. I like it. Y'all know that's right. <laughs> that's a good one. Big Y'all see Big Gam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Big, Big Gam might be your nickname, man, mm-hmm. but, you know, for me, you you were the barber, man. You was the barber up in there. Oh, Your job man. in the locker room was the barber, and that line on Fridays was sick. Guys was late to meetings. You know what I mean? <laughs> Trying to get their get their fade before you know before before that Sunday game. That well, was a, that's well, a big you, deal. You might have hands on the football field, but I have hands on and off the football <laughs> field. So you know, yes, I I, I cut hair. I was telling him telling himself about a story about me cutting Daryl Gardner's hair. Oh man, that'd be the toughest job ever. And, <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, man. And juice and juice would come back there and say, Man, I hope them clippers don't break, man. I'm just like, how are you giving him the divots in this man head? <laughs> Daryl had about four or five divots in the back of his head. Oh, and I used to have to pick him up, cut him, pick him up, you pick him up, pick him up. Pick him up trouble, big pick damn. Him up and cut him. Oh man. But, and Shorty could not have liked people coming in there talking mess when he was in the chair. So six six eight three yeah. three ten. Yeah. yeah. Three oh, percent body was, fat. Juice was all I know his size. Yeah. I know his dimensions. Uh, you're gonna sure. stay right over there. Right. Okay, right. yeah. Let me just cut your hair and let me get out. But once they're in the chair, they're kind of at your mercy, no? Yes, they are. Look, everybody has a pair of clippers, and they all think they can cut hair. But so I, we were telling somebody about this, and they're like, oh, was it just a bowl cut? I go, no, no, no. Like, Ed was a fade. professional. Oh, fade. Fade. Yeah, you yes. can, you brought out your, you know, it was like you watch those assassin yeah. movies, and they you open up the suitcase. He had a cape. Yeah, no, he had the, he <laughs> Did he have the little the barbershop <laughs> liquid there where you clean had, off the... Uh, I had the liquids. I had everything. <laughs> were they paying and you? Oh, yeah. It was, he yeah. Was, so you had to pay it. Oh, yes. Yeah. So your you know, side hustle was I'm literally. crossing my legs on that one. Yes. <laughs> you know, I mean, dolphin money was good, but shoot, I need my little side hustle. <laughs> it was way better than that, that weekend money we got, wasn't it? You know, Where did that skill money. come from, though? Um, actually, my cousin was a um, beautician for over 40 years. Okay. And I used to watch her. And um, went to school um, in South Carolina, and um, I've been cutting it ever since. I see you still got a great hairline. You still fade? You fade yourself? I did it this morning. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Big Gam. That's what I'm talking about. Big Gam. He, he just, he, I was in the mirror for like five, ten minutes. But like, hold up. I got to get this side. Okay. All right. Let me make sure that line is up right. Oh, he's too funny. But wait, you said you went to school in South Carolina. So you went to school, like a barber school? Went to a barber, a barber school. When? While um, you were playing? Before you were playing? Um, during the summer. Yep. Um, after the season, thing like in uh, February or March. So and, um, you're licensed, certified, professional. Yeah, I mean, you know, that, uh, that's what it takes. Right. Well, yeah. did you ever cut this guy? Because oh, there was oh, a time. Okay. No, he was always he bald headed. You know, he, you he always had head. a hat. He always had a hat on, you and his stop, hat was man. on backwards. You know, he really didn't have a hairline. See, look, that's why he covered it up. <laughs> No hairline juice, right? <laughs> that's because the Jerry curl I had it burned everything oh, out. Man. It burned everything out. Oh, but man. when you're from Penn State, that's what happens. Yeah. You don't you don't have a hairline. I see where we're going with this one. <laughs> uh, yeah. See now, I'm, see now I'm back in the game now. I was gonna leave him alone, Big Seth. Now it's on and popping. Yeah, oh, I don't think. Yeah, it's gonna be all gloves the are off. Time here. Gloves are off. <laughs> so you talk about always being on time and not wanting to be blamed for other people being late. But one of your former teammates is a guy by the name of Randy McMichael. Oh boy. And so I reached out to Randy Mack. I said, what can you tell me about Ed? He's like, man, that dude almost cut my damn ear off. Is this true? First of all, Randy went to sleep in the chair. <laughs> so, that's a no-no. We know um, that's a no-no. You can't go to sleep. If you're in the chair, you cannot go. I know you're tired, but you're not that tired yeah. to get a haircut. You want to look good. What about cutting him? I did not cut him. Okay. Why would I cut? I'm, I'm, I don't I, know. He said hands, you almost cut his These ear hands off. are priceless. So there's no reason for me to cut nobody. So Randy's lying. <laughs> Randy's lying. A lot of times guys come in the league and they have a, a mentor on the team, a teammate that's a mentor. For you, um, I'd have to imagine Troy Drayton probably is one of those guys that played that role. Troy claims that he looked out for you, and as a matter of fact, he took you and your dad down to South Beach. Oh, boy. Now, how, how'd that night work out for all you guys? Great. <laughs> it was great. It was, you know what? Let me tell you something. Troy is a, he was a great guy and we, we did party and my dad had um, the, the, the shirt with the pencils and the pens in it with the, the, the nice little Kango hat and we're sitting down and Troy said, hey man, what you guys want to drink? I said, man, I'm buying. So my dad said, man, give me a gin. 
So he was gonna buy my dad a big bottle of gin. I said, no, Troy. Don't do that. <laughs> I'm give responsible him one, for Give this him man. one drink. Right. So make a long story short, we go out, we dance, we come back. My dad is sleeping with two <laughs> girls on one side side of him. I was like, Boy. in the club. In the club. Wait, but hold on. <laughs> There's so much to unpack here. So your dad is here. You're in the nightclub. Now, did you did did he just say you went dancing? Yeah, I got, I, I mean, I got good feet. I was on all three levels. <laughs> second, first floor, second floor, third floor. Wait, was, so so where is this? What club is this? You, you should know. I, mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I, yeah, I, I was not clubbing, Big uh, Seth. All right, so let's get back to this. So you were <laughs> dancing. Yes. You come back and pops is sleep knocked out. And I said, Dad, he was like. Right. Well, you brought me out here. Right. You know, I might as well enjoy myself. I'm glad he only had yeah. the one. Though. Yeah, but he was asleep. Yeah, no. Dad, you can't be sleep the bottle. He might it's a bad a impression of me. Dad, you can't be asleep. We don't go to sleep. I mean, I have fallen asleep in Oh, wait, the club. so the issue was that he was asleep, not was the asleep. issue that not he had girl. company. No. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean. Welcome to Miami. Definitely. Yeah. So yeah, let, let's talk about the hazing. When you were a rook, so now you're saying that you weren't hazed. But on the flip side of that, you decided that your rookies needed to get hazed. Because, again, Randy McMichael, yeah. Randy claims that he said that you were maybe a little bit bougie, that when you were sending people out, that all the other rookies went and had to get Popeye's chicken, but you demanded what? What did he say? <clears throat> no, I need to hear this one, too. This, this is a good one. He here. said that you sent him out for Stevie B's ribs every time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That's right. So was, that is that a fact. A I won't, that, that's a that fact. That's a fact. Okay. Yeah. Juice didn't like Juice didn't like our hazing though. And why is that? Because I didn't get hazed. Nah, that's, so that's know, what I'm that's saying. Okay. So but, Juice has been carrying the weight of being taped up and thrown into a cold tub. I, t- his I, t- life. I tell you what. I tell you what. This is the first. This is the first thing I learned from Juice from his heart. When I first got injured and I had a high ankle sprain, we went to play Denver. In Mexico City, and I was in the tub. I was crying. I was like, "Man, you're a grown man. What you doing crying?" And he and I had and I and I had my and I and and I had my number. And Fred Barnett came up to me and said, "Man, he said, do you think the Dolphins will want you if they didn't give you your jersey number?" And Juice was co-signing. He came up and they said, "Come on, Big Ed, come on, man. You gotta get your mind right, you know." And that's the first thing I knew about Juice as far as his his character, his leadership. You had an eighty number. Yeah, the 80 number's huge. At that that's point. what it was in that day uh, and yeah. age, right? Yeah, I had that number from high school, college, and the pros. That's what's up. And I wanted to ask you another question real quick about long snapping. Now it seems like they've got these revs. These revs they've got it figured out where they can, they can snap it, and the ball's already got laces out, man. Did you have that type of uh, idea of, of snapping as well where the, uh, the holder didn't have to turn, turn the yeah. laces? When I was with Orlando Mari, Orlando told me where he wanted the ball at. So I actually – Worked on the, I crafted this for like eight months. Mm-hmm. So I positioned the ball and learned how to position the ball to where is the holder. All you have to do is catch it and put the ball down. That's what made the kicker easier right. and the punters. You know, a lot of times with the punters, either they want it in a right hip or left hip. And I procast that for, that's why I was mm. tennis balls with my hands, fingertips, makes your fingers stronger, you know, and I worked on that like, I threw like a thousand balls a day. I, I wanted to be perfect, so I, and I tried to be perfect with every snap. You know, what do you, do you want to be a good snap or do you want to be the best? Man, I got I've got one more question for you, man. Our intel that we've talked about over and over again also uh, reveals that you might have had an interesting experience in a Mexican airport. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> Wait a second. <laughs> Seems like he knows what you're talking about. <laughs> oh, Can you oh tell boy. us about this thing? Oh, man, where you get that? Where you, you get know, we got, we got sources, man. Oh, man. We got to put some effort into this. We don't just know. show we up. I had to sit up for this one now. <laughs> yeah. no, you know. The legs came on cross, Juice. That's all I know. <laughs> I forgot you get this balance. <laughs> the legs came on cross. Man, how'd you hear about that story? Hey, man. hey this is what we do. Hey, we dive story. in. We dive in, bro. Okay, I'm going to tell you. We went to Cancun. And, and you know we had a group of us. And so Who's in the group? Man, JT, Derek Rogers, my brother. We're going back to Fort Lauderdale. So uh-huh. this guy is drunk. Okay. So this guy takes his bag and he puts them in the front of our bags. And I was like, man, what are we doing? No, I go and 
take my back and say, yo, yo, let's go. So we got in front of their peoples. This guy comes in there. He comes up to me. He said, what's up, boy? Oh, boy? boy. No, I was no, like, no. oh, man. So I said, man, who are you talking to? So this is Big Gam. <laughs> Did you Big Gam Man, put my hand up there. He slapped my hand down. Man, oh. let me tell you something. <laughs> if you want to see Derek Rogers run quick and easy out of there, man, it was a big fight. They thought I hit the guy. I didn't hit him. I'm a good guy. I'm not a bad guy. <laughs> So <laughs> you had to protect your hands. I had to you used to say it all hands. the time, Juice. You're yeah. not trying to these, fight. These fight are my precious, right. precious babies, you know. But the police officers came. They thought they were going to arrest me. But but they actually had to leave and stay until 11 o'clock for their next fight. We got on that, that same man, flight. Man. All yeah. because yeah. he put his bag All in because front. he put his bag in front of me. Don't do that. Yeah, all sure. right. So we know that you really made your money uh, as a long snapper. But you did play some tight ends. So you are familiar with the two-minute drill. And yes. we have this segment now in the Uh-oh. fish tank, and it's the fish tank two-minute drill. Uh-oh. So we're going to come at you rapid fire from all different angles. He crossed the legs back. Yep. I think yep. he's officially ready. I'm ready. All Are right, you? we're going to start the clock. All right, I think we've already established this first question, but do you seriously still cut your own hair? Yes, do I do. you always cut your own hair? <laughs> he's not worried about always, the clock. Always. This guy Every is, day, I ain't worried about that. Yes. Always I've, 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 I've always kept my hair. I've cut my hair since I've been 12 years old. Who was your worst Miami Dolphins client my as a worst? barber? Yeah. Larry Chester. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Man, he know, I mean, his hair. <laughs> I mean, you got to shampoo your hair a little bit sometimes. <laughs> Sorry, Larry. You didn't wash it? I thought that was full service. You didn't no, wash you gotta it. you got to wash it beforehand. I ain't you cut right that. by the shower. Hey, I got you hair. Cut right I, there. But, yeah, right by the shower. So, but still, his hair was just hard to cut sometimes. <laughs> All okay. Right. All right. During your time playing, which Dolphins offensive player brought more food to the locker room, you or OG or Ronda Guest? Me? I was, shoot, I provided for everybody. They took my Pringles. <laughs> I bought three three things of Pringles, and they ate all of them. But OG <laughs> said you guys had lockers right, right next, next to each other. Right next to each other. <laughs> and you both were bringing all kinds of food. But, but my snacks were better. You're right. <laughs> my snacks were always better. I think both of you yeah. could have pushed away a little bit. No, nah, my, my, my snacks were better, way better. Okay. Yeah, no OG, no. All right. yeah. So you're taking all the credit. I yes. get it. No problem there. Okay. If today's rules, we kind of talked about this, if today's rules of protecting long snappers existed when you played, how long could your career have lasted? 15, 20 years. <laughs> I still be playing right now. Right there. There it is. <laughs> they had 50. There it is. All right. We got all right, prior to your retirement following the 2005 season, you were the last active player who had caught a Dan Marino touchdown pass. Where's the ball? I got it. It's in. It's, it's in a sacred it protected, place. It's protected. in a safe? Yes. Very, very protective. So yes. you caught, yeah, one of the last ones. Joe Rose caught the first one. Nobody knows where either of these footballs time are. Out, we got, time, time out, Time out, Ooh, ooh. We got four four. seconds left. We got one play left. One play left. Okay. Yes. I don't know if you're going to take your hat off for this one, but we did talk about this a little bit. And Preach has his ooh. hat on. Well, we can see your hatline. Oh. So oh, if no me, OJ, and DJ Preach walk into your barger, barber shop, which one of us even gets to sit in the chair? Uh, who's going to appreciate it? <laughs> he's got one preach. All right, he's yeah. got a little bit left. Yeah. That's the two-minute drill. Yeah. Okay, I was, hey, he worked that clock. He did, he did well. But Juice helped you out. He called the timeout. He was standing yeah, there next to the back. He was standing there. Run down the sideline, run down the sideline. Oh, man, and this was fun. I bump into you almost every game. I don't know what yes. it is. I think when we're running to the post-game show, I see you. You finally made it here in the tank. Glad to be here. We appreciate I appreciate y'all having me. I had a lot of fun memories going back and everything, and I definitely appreciate it. Hope I'll come back again. Yeah, thanks for diving in, Ed. Yeah, appreciate it.